today I'm going to be teaching fellow YouTuber Melissa Lucy and you about periodic trends and specifically atomic radius. Now don't forget to download your free study plan using the link in the description. There you're going to find several videos that I personally recommend and other resources that I know can help cut your study time in half. All right. Let's begin. So when we're talking about the atomic radius, we're actually talking about the size essentially of an atom. And atomic radius is going to tell us it's basically one half of the distance between two nuclei. So what I want you to think of is there's two different atoms that are next to each other, like shown in the picture. And then we're taking this distance. So this is the nucleus. And then this is being taken from like one of the, the energy levels here. So this is Let's say this is n equals two. And we would take that dif difference or distance, and that's one half of the distance of just one nuclei. And then we're going to add that to another uh, atom that's nearby. And then that's one half the distance of that same, another nuclei. So adding those together gives us the full distance between our nuclei. So I know it sounds confusing. What I really just want you to think of is when we're talking about the atomic radius, we're talking about the size of the atom. Like that's like going to be probably the most simplest way to think about it instead of having to go into like, oh, you know, specifics on how how large or, or you know, it's oh, it's uh, one half the distance between two nuclei. It's the size of the atom. OK. <laughs> OK. So some of the um, atoms are going to have like more um, energy levels. So it might not always be equivalent to each of their one halves. Is that true or? Um, I, I would say just think of it as some are, some atoms are larger than others. So like our, our atomic radii are going to be yeah greater, essentially, which is what you're saying. So like we are yeah. going to have higher energy levels, correct, and the distance would be greater, correct. Okay. And this is the basic trend that we'd look at it. So we increase, the atomic radius increases as you move down a column, and then as you move from right to left of the actual uh, periodic table. So this is gonna be really important to know. So something with periodic trends, it's just actually understanding, hey, how does the trend work? How does it increase? Because you're gonna be given questions like, oh, compare two different atoms with each other, which one has a higher atomic radius? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I so did it on the homework and I was like, what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, so it'll make more sense today. Uh, but I'd say definitely know, like just this image alone, like burn it in your brain right now, just knowing that this is how the trend works. Isn't and, that opposite mm -hmm. of the um, the other one? Like it's correct. like the other way. Electronegativity and um, ionization energy. Yeah, correct. So atomic radius is going to be the opposite from those. And then the majority, okay. which we'll go over, the majority of the other periodic trends are always going in the same direction. It's literally, yeah, the opposite, where it's it's like this corner that would be the highest but not in this case. In this case, we want to look at kind of like the opposite corner. Like this is where the highest atomic radius is or the, si the sizes of our atoms increase. Oh. Let's go over why. So this is a better breakdown actually showing you the size of that atom. So as you can tell, we start off with like hydrogen and that's tiny. And then as we move down the column, it starts to increase. So when we get down all the way to cesium, and by the way, these numbers on top are not the atomic numbers. They're actually the distance or the size of our radius um, in picometers. So this is in picometers. But just knowing that and seeing, like not that you necessarily have to know that it's in picometers, but just showing you kind of like how the trend actually works and seeing the sizes of each atom. So this is going to be beneficial just to, to have, a, you know, a good visual. Once again, I don't expect you to remember like, oh, how large is it? Or, or you know, how, how much is the actual radius in picometers? Um, now, this I do expect you to know. And your professor does too. So understanding why the trend actually works this way. So why does, you know, why does the atomic radius increase as we move down a column? Well, that's because we're actually increasing our quantum number n, right? The principal quantum number, remember, is telling us the size and the energy level. Um, of that orbital. So recall that this is really saying, oh, n equals one, n equals two, and so on. And it keeps increasing that energy level. And because of that, then we're actually 
um, making our orbitals larger, which is what you were talking about uh, when we were going back to here, we're going to have more rings, right? Yeah. And then that's going to increase our distance. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So like something versus, once again, we could look at the um, electro configuration where we would see lithium, which is in highlighted in purple, and then cesium highlighted in purple as well. Well, the only thing that's changing here, it's not the actual um, like S orbital. Instead, it's just our N value that's increasing. And that's the main reason why it increases that way. If we were to look at the other trend, this goes with our Z effective, which remember was talking about the, the overall charge of our actual atom. So if I were to go back to this picture, just talking about Z affected, um, all we're looking about is, is, sorry, all we're talking about here is the total attraction that an electron feels towards that nucleus. And then during that same duration, remember that idea that, oh, well, electrons are also repelling at the same time, and there's two different things going on, attraction and repulsion. Um, so let's go back to understanding how these two come together. So it increases as we go from right to left, just because our Z effective is actually going to decrease. So if our Z effective decreases, then that's essentially just saying that um, there's a stronger attraction between the inner electrons or the core electrons with the nucleus rather than the uh, valence electrons or the outermost electrons with the nucleus. And all that means, and I'll explain what that means in a second, but this is basically resulting in a larger atomic radii. So I want you to compare two different elements here. So if we were to start off with, let's say, chlorine, and if I were to actually draw this out, showing all the electrons that it has, so chlorine has 17 right, 17 electrons. Well, I know that there are seven valence electrons. So those seven valence electrons are gonna be on the outside. And then if you didn't know that that's how many they have, remember, we could have actually written out the electron configuration and then did what we did before, counting how many core electrons, counting how many valence electrons. So I can show you that. Um, if I were to draw out the, the electron configuration of chlorine, this would be 1s2. 2s2, right, going here, and then 2p6, so now we're here, turning around, 3s2, and now I'm here, uh, 3p, and how much, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I wanted to count how many valence electrons there are, we look at the highest coefficient here, or highest n value, and then now we look at the electrons, 2 plus 5, 7. So there are 7 valence electrons, all that means is there's going to be seven on this last orbital. And then next, everything in, in between is going to be our core electrons. So there's eight here and two here. So add, all, add that all together, that gives us 10. Good so far. Yes. Yeah, cool. So if I were to um, actually try to figure out what the Z effective is, remember that Z would be the number of protons, so 17. And then the number of our core electrons, we said was 10. Subtract that, that gives us a positive 7. Now, if I were to compare this with uh, sodium, then I would see, okay, well, sodium has only one valence electron. And then uh, that's why I have, here's the, here he is. So there's our valence electron, just that one on the outermost shell, and then several core electrons inside. So our number of protons would be 11 our number of core electrons would be 10, and our Z effective is plus one. So going back to the trend, just understanding it, we just moved from right to left, and it's saying that it's increasing as we go towards the left. So as we increase the atomic radius, we're going to decrease Z effective. And it's so is the, is the Z effective just the number of valence electrons because it end up being the same? Like, are we essentially just calculating the valence electrons? Kind of, sort of, but we're, in, we're it doesn't define it, I'd say. It's okay. Yeah, because it, it's not what Z effective actually is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so I, I don't want to say that that's the definition, no. Right. Okay. Um. Good to know. Okay. 
But they're um, inversely related. That's like Correct. the point. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. And then it, it's basically the concept is just that, well, doesn't NA have, actually, if I were to compare it, they both have the same. But, but this is just showing you that, hey, this is decreasing. That is the trend. It's understanding that C effective is going to decrease as atomic radius increases. The whole point of it, or the whole reason for this, is because the core electrons are going to be um, more attracted to the nucleus versus if C effective was increasing, it would be the opposite, which I believe I have here, I do. So if C effective is increasing, so the opposite, right? This is the trend where it's actually decreasing if we move from left to right comparing the same elements that we did before. Well, once again, this is inversely proportional. So as we decrease the atomic radius, we'll, we'll increase the Z effective. Now it's the opposite where our stronger attraction is between the outermost electrons and our um, atomic radius is then gonna be smaller. So understanding that trend, I would say, is gonna be important. Um, I, the reason why I put both that, oh, this is increasing as you move from right to left and then Z effective is decreasing and vice versa here is because I don't know what's going to be on the test. So I don't know if he's either going to throw this question that's saying, oh, uh, the reason why the atomic radius increases or decreases this way is because Z effective increases or the other one. So I want you to be prepared for either type of question. Okay. Okay. Questions so far? Uh, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> cool. So let's just arrange this. Um, a lot of these questions are literally going to look like this, where they're just going to say, arrange the following elements in uh, increasing order or in order of increasing atomic radius. So in increasing order, that just means we're going to have the smallest be first, and then the largest will be last. Okay, so... For now, I'm just gonna highlight and see where is everything on the periodic table. So I know that K is potassium, that's gonna be here. And then uh, cesium is here, Na is here, and hydrogen is here. So they're all in the same group. So what would be the small, what would have the smallest atomic radius? Um, hydrogen? Yes, what's next? Um, sodium. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Um, potassium. Good. <laughs> I was trying to remember what the K was. <laughs> and the last um, one. I don't know what CS is. Cesium. Cesium? Okay, cesium. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's it. And then if this were to ask you to find this in decreasing order, you would just flip this around. So the first one would be cesium, then it would be potassium, sodium, and then hydrogen. So okay. definitely be aware of whatever it says here, because that could be tricky. They're either going to say increasing or decreasing. Okay. All right, we'll do the next one. I'll highlight it in blue. So carbon is here. Next we have boron. Uh, lithium is here. And oxygen's here. So what would be the smallest the smallest would be oxygen. Good. Keep going. Carbon. Mm -hmm. Boron. Lithium. That's it. Cool. Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so this one's the opposite. Now this is decreasing order. So, okay, this is decreasing order. Once again, I'm just going to highlight where everything is. I think that's probably the hardest part is if they give you elements that you're not, you know, familiar with. Is actually identifying where they are on the table and um, that probably yeah. takes the longest time so this definitely helps you get familiar with everything um, and barium too okay so this is decreasing order meaning we're actually going to start off with the largest and then get to the smallest okay so it's gonna be barium mm -hmm. calcium magnesium Good. beryllium that's it so those are nice <laughs> Not too bad. It's really just knowing, hey, is this saying increasing or decreasing? Right. And trick question. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, why did I have to stay easy? <laughs> so with this one, 
the reason why I'm showing this table and it's a little bit different is I wanted to show you how close um, it is. Like if I'm comparing nitrogen and if I'm comparing sulfur, um, like these two. Now, if you were actually given the values and even given the sizes, it would be easy to tell, but you're not, you know, you're not given that you're just you're literally just saying like, hey, these are pretty equidistant to each other. How do I know which one is going to be larger? Because they're basically, this is said to have opposing trends. And all that means is that nitrogen is higher up. Actually, is nitrogen is further to the left, right? Or yeah, further mm -hmm. to the left. So we know, okay, that has to increase. But then sulfur is farther down and that follows this trend. So because you don't know which trend is greater and you don't know the actual size of the atom, you're not, you're not given the actual value, there's not enough information here. So you wouldn't be able to make a decision. That's why this is a trick question. So if you were given this sort of question, um, and I know you have multiple choice, so one of the answers could be opposing trends or not enough information or something where it basically <laughs> says I can't make up my mind which one <laughs> yeah okay so be aware of these types of questions and once again it's just it's just when those are are equidistant to each other so like another one could be which is the next one um this one I wanted to change colors let's do yellow se and i is here so those two again I don't know which one is going to win because once again, they have opposing trends. Um, I believe that's selenium. Selenium is higher up and then, and actually, sorry, it's it's more to the left. And then iodine is further down. So I don't know what it is. Once again, it's opposing trends. So I would literally just write opposing trends if this were um, a fill in the blank, or if it was multiple choice, then I know, okay, has to have something like that, opposing trends, not enough information, none of these, one of, them, one of those types of questions. Okay. All right, so I know there are several different exceptions here that you are expected to know, but breathe, you can do this, write it out, practice a lot, okay? This is gonna require a lot of practice, I know, but I know you can do this. So don't give up, keep going, and I have even more resources right here, so check out the next video and keep learning with me.